Good morning and welcome to the show. This is In Touch and I am Beth Christie, your hostess. In Touch is our weekly half hour public affairs show. And since it is a public affairs show, that means if you are a nonprofit group or organization, if you are a company here in the Hudson Valley helping out a nonprofit group or organization, we'd love to have you on the program and talk about what is important to you, the issues that are concerning you here in the Hudson Valley. So at the end of today's show, I'll give you a myriad of ways in which you can reach out to me and talk with me and we'll get you on the show. So let me turn microphones on and say that first off, this show is pre-recorded. Um, I certainly did not ask these these very kind ladies to get up at this hour of the morning. So you should just know that. The advantage of that is whatever station you're listening to, you can go to that station's website and you can get the complete show. Also in that where the show is, there's a there's an article And in that article, I will have links to the website. I'll have links to Facebook page, whatever it is we talk about today in phone numbers. So please keep that in mind. So I am welcoming uh, Tony Gutter, who is Director of Development at the Food Bank of the Hudson Valley. So Tony, very kind of you to make the time and be here. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. No problem. And Jessica Fatante, did I say it right? Yes, you did. I never want to mess up someone's last name, and I always kind of like, okay, you can get it. And Jessica is Special Events Coordinator at the yes. Food Bank of the Hudson Valley. So Jessica and Tony, thank you guys very thank much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. For being here. Um, it's funny because I've wanted to have you guys here uh, uh, for a long time, but every life gets in the way, things get busy, you guys, everything. So it's first off, it's, it's a great pleasure to have you here um, of the work that you do the work that you facilitate, the people that you help. So as we said off mic, I have no doubt that people have heard of the Food Bank of the Hudson Valley. But they may not know all that it does and what it is. So one of the things I like about this show is to start with, let's do a history of the Food Bank. Let's talk about the Food Bank so that everybody goes, oh, I didn't know that. Or wait, here's how I can help. So, Tony, give us a a brief background of the food bank. Sure, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, The food bank started uh, back in 1990. Uh, It is situated in Cornwall on Hudson, New York, which is Orange County. Uh, We have 16 full staff employees there. And uh, as I was uh, mentioning before, food bank is different from a food pantry. People mistake us for a food pantry. A food pantry is where people go to pick up bags of food. Uh, The food bank is, uh, we receive large (coughs) palletized amounts of food that we distribute to soup kitchens, food pantries, rehabilitation programs, senior citizen programs, daycare programs. Uh, we have uh, you know emergency shelters, etc. So, like I tell people, t- the difference is think of it like a bank, an institutionalized bank, where you go in to deposit money, and then you know you go to withdraw it. That's what we are. We receive those palletized amounts of food from wholesalers, <coughs> distributors, and uh, other farmers, uh, other organizations, and it is withdrawn from representatives of soup kitchens, food pantries, and so forth. We're not open to the general public, otherwise we'd have thousands and thousands of people waiting in lines out there. So we work with these organizations. We distribute food (coughs) to six counties, that's Orange, Ulster, Putnam, Rockland, Sullivan, and Dutchess Dutchess County, sorry. (laughs) And last year, we distributed close to 13 million pounds of food to those counties (gasps) in the Hudson Valley. And we know that every year, it's more and more people uh, that we are feeding only because of the poundage that we distribute. It's always been, I would say probably a million point two you know, not 1.2 million pounds more each year than previous years. So that's how we know the need out there is great and food is still in great demand. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. When the food bank was, was started, um, and you did a great job of explaining the difference between a food bank and a food pantry, was it set up initially as the food bank as a way to help out all these organizations? Someone said, you know, this would be a great way to be able to help a lot of people and a lot of organizations. So it's, it was started that way. Uh, yes and no. It okay. was started originally, uh, our main office is in uh, Albany, New York, mm-hmm. Regional Food Bank of Northeastern New York. 
And what was happening is we had Vista people working down here, along with the regional food bank of northeastern New York. Trucks were being sent from Albany to the organizations down here to feed the people. So as the need got greater and greater, they decided we needed yeah. uh, a home of <clears throat> our own here. Mm -hmm. We needed an, a, a, another distribute, a, a distribution center because the need in six counties was uh, getting out of control. Right, right. So you know what makes me what makes me feel good is in um, some of the many different events that we've done here at Town Square Media, and and the monies or the food will go to the food bank of the Hudson Valley. I, I wasn't off when I said you really are helping a lot of organizations. And, and I didn't know how many organizations, and I am a little embarrassed to say I didn't realize how many counties. I always say every time mm -hmm. I do a show, I learn something, and that's something that I learned. So when you donate to the food bank, you truly are helping so many people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And right now we have... So many initiatives. It's not just us distrib distributing food to those organizations like I mentioned. We also are involved in the backpack program, working with schools in the six counties for uh, to work with uh, the schools to make sure that the kids who receive subsidized breakfast and lunches go home every weekend with some food. Aww. So we provide the book bags. Wow. We work with the schools to get the food in those book bags to give to those kids. Uh, we also have a, a farm market that we started a year ago. And I believe there's two in Kingston and one in Newburgh right now. And again, it's a desert oasis. There's people do do, who don't have transportation to get to the, to the market to buy fresh produce or because fresh produce is expensive. Right, it is. And they can't afford it. So it's our way of, we work with the farmers in six counties who donate to us, and then in turn, we bring that produce to these uh, uh, markets wow. in these areas so people can get fresh produce. Now that's obviously a seasonal. Yes. With, yeah. the, with the farm market. So that's something for people to keep in mind. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, I'll have an article around this mm -hmm. show. So I'll link to those those specific sections Good. on your page Good, sure. so people can get the schedule and, and know when it is and where it, it, it right. is and times. So we'll handle that. But you're right. Fresh produce can be expensive. Mm -hmm. um, transportation is an issue. Um, you know, if you're struggling um, to make ends meet, there are things they're going to have to give. You're going to have to let a few things right. go. You're going to have to juggle on sometimes a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, okay, I have this amount of gas. Mm -hmm. I can't run to the store right now. That's just not happening. Well, or you don't even really have a transport, have transportation yeah, you of have your own. <laughs> um, one of the reasons that they're in the, the communities that, that they're, they are is because what they've discovered is that there is a huge population that doesn't have transportation and are walking more than a mile to a grocery store or with hand carts or whatever they can, or they're trying to, you know, they're having to take a taxi right. back because they're physically, you know, so people are only buying what they can carry and they're going to whatever's closed. So they don't actually consider something like a bodega or a, a convenience store to be a real food opportunity. Right. They're really looking at where's, where's your local supermarket? Where can you go to actually get good, healthy food? And if that's more than a mile away, then that's considered a food desert. And wow. So they can, and so we're trying to move these into these these organ, you know, these areas that have these problems, mm -hmm. and populations that literally just aren't being served. It's not even, you know, even if they could get somewhere, this isn't something that they can access on a reliable. Wow. Uh, Goodness format. gracious! You know, I have to say, I almost had tears in my eyes over the backpack program. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's yes, that's that's very powerful because for a long time, I mean. Y Yes, the subsidized meals at school and during that is great, but there's two days to go before you come mm -hmm. back. Right. And and that's kind of had fallen through the cracks, but not anymore. What a powerful program to be able to, to, to do. Yep. And, you know, wow. when I tell people, you know, uh, because Jessica and I go out and do uh, presentations and all that, and we tell people how important food is 
to children. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, they don't get proper food. They're not going to do well on their schoolwork, mm -hmm. test, or whatever. Uh, again, it, uh, it's also important for the senior citizens. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. senior citizens have to choose sometimes between food and medications and and uh, uh, bills that they have to pay. Again, if they don't have the proper food, their medication is going to be ineffective. Right. You right. know, so, you exactly. know, food is the most basic of things that every person needs. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, Absolutely. And Jessica, as you had mentioned, and I loved your explanation of, you know, what what a, a food desert, if mm -hmm. I'm using that term yes. correctly, what that means. Mm -hmm. And it is shocking to me that they even exist. I, I have to say that. I mean, you talk about learning. I, I'm shocked mm -hmm. that that even exists. It is really it, a lot of people. You don't think about how far you go to the local supermarket. I actually when they started talking about it, actually just on purpose, you know, sort of drove to my local supermarket and put the odometer on my car because I'm fortunate enough to have one of those and the ability to go sort of whenever we want. And we are just about two miles from the closest supermarket. And I live in Middletown. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you don't think about it. We don't think about, you know, because I drive past it every day. I mean, on my way into work, I drive past three of them, four of them right. every day. And I, you don't think about what that means if you don't have access to transportation or if that's, okay, I can walk there, but then I have to get a taxi to bring me back because I can't walk mm -hmm. so far with, you know, with groceries. I wouldn't be groceries. able to walk with groceries that no. far. I got to tell you, that's not happening. It really, so you end up going to the, you know, the, the corner market is much closer. We have one of those, uh, you know, blockers. But it doesn't provide house. the doesn't healthy food. Provide. But yeah, yeah, I really. You're right. <laughs> you don't want to think about You guys are right. You know what that is. And, but it's, I mean, it's somewhere, and if that's what you can get to, that's what they're going that's to. That's what so they're you really, Good nutritious food is, is cannot be undervalued, you know, or, right. or overvalued, really. So, Jessica, with special events coordinator, what does that mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> how, like, you know, we're talking about the special programs. There's so much mm -hmm. that you guys do. So let's talk about that a little well, bit. Well, the events that I work with are actually, um, as Tony mentioned, she and I are, are the development department. So we yeah. are the ones that come out and, <laughs> and get the money to be able to fund all of these programs or, right. or help to get the money to, to be able mm -hmm. to fund these programs because we are very fortunate that – a number of our uh, the backpack program and and the farm stand program are certainly um, being assisted by or almost entirely funded by huge grants that we've been been able, you know find community partners who are willing to that's help an us art out with in those. itself grant writing yeah. it, that's yeah, an art it really <laughs> not not one that I necessarily <laughs> but <laughs> not uh, my particular uh, but you're I mean God love you but that's the, yeah. I don't think that so, people realize how hard that is oh it is it is a very difficult. difficult. Yeah skill um yeah. people who are, are grant writers are really i mean that's that's a great skill to have um so we've been fortunate to get a number of grants that that help um with community foundations and mm -hmm. uh community partners and local the local economies project uh, to fund those particular projects among others there are so many i mean we could sit, probably sit here and fill the entire half hour <laughs> discussing our, our grant partners um so what tony and you know what what i do predominantly at the food bank and what or what tony and i do is as sort of a team is work with with the community to do local events that will help raise both awareness and cool um, funds for the food bank. So coming up, actually, we are right in right smack in the middle of prepping for our big event season. So we are yeah. very busy uh, from now yes. until the end of the year. Uh, or the first one up is our Walk to Fight Hunger. That's actually Columbus Day Saturday. Okay. That's on October 10th. Uh, it's at the Walkway over the Hudson. It's in our 13th year. That we've been doing it. We've moved moved venues a few times, uh, but we've been very happy with the walkway. It's a great location. We get mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, it, it's okay. just a fun walk, and it's really easy for people. Uh, we try and make you know make sure we want it to be family friendly. We want people to be able to come out with their kids, mm -hmm. um, and you know people who are not necessarily able to do hills and and rocks and running and all of the yeah i'm um, raising my hand walkway on over, yeah we the walkway <laughs> is nice it's flat it's really yeah. pretty if you've never been up there it's absolutely gorgeous yeah. especially this time of year because you get the fall foliage yeah. on both sides and we really we are not a high pressure walk um we like to say you know if you want to walk halfway and come back we won't we won't judge. Nobody's telling. There is no, no judging. <laughs> and and I just I, I very often like to point out to people that, you know, we start on the Highland side. Feel free to walk to Poughkeepsie, have lunch, and come back whenever. You right. know, we're not going to stand there timing you. Right. And I think it's also powerful to, to be able to bring your children. Yes. So that your children begin to have an understanding of, 
of doing things and helping other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a very easy Uh, way. We have a lot of local schools that come out and help support it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's free to participate as a walker. We don't actually require an entrance fee. Um, But we do offer if you uh, want to get people to sponsor you to walk. If you get $25 in sponsorship, we will actually give you a t-shirt that's been lo- uh, donate that has been designed by a local artist. Oh, cool. Um, in this case, actually, he's a, he's a dual member of our team. Uh, he's Congrats. also our warehouse manager. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. So well, that's cool. Eddie Johnson yeah. did the uh, design for the t-shirt this year, and he's nice. uh, very happy to be able to do that. Um, and it's a lovely design. So we do a different one every year, and we try and get a different artist involved. Uh, to make sure look at you guys reaching out to all different parts of the community you guys are helping with basic needs and also the creative side which in my opinion is a basic need but i realize not everybody sees that but good for you guys Uh, i love that yeah we try and get a different shirt every year so they you know people if uh, for 25 dollars or more and we get uh, water and refreshments donated from hannaford's uh they're incredibly you know wonderful in, in donating all of that to us so mm-hmm. they give all of the and then all of the other sponsors will give giveaways and it's a nice little day you know <clears throat> day out and in, into the community and you know just to be able to do with whoever i mean we've had people come out in nice. wheelchairs so yeah. it's it's a lovely day. and you right. can bring your dog because yeah. it is dog friendly well, and what we tell people <laughs> you know even if they give us a few dollars, can't give us $25. We let them know that for every dollar that they donate, it provides four meals to a person in need. I was going to ask that. That's a very powerful statistic. I mean, every year... We we've done the jam the van. We we've, we've done a million meals to, mm-hmm. right. that goes to the food bank of the Hudson Valley, and all of us will again be doing that this year. And that to me is one of the, the most powerful thing to be able to say, of of uh, be able to break it down mm-hmm. when people think, oh, I don't have fifty dollars to give. You don't need to give fifty dollars. No. If everybody that stopped by when we are out front of shop rights and the locations we're going to be coming up in November before Thanksgiving gave a dollar. Oh, you know yes. how much money that would mm-hmm. be? That's crazy. Yes. So yes. a dollar provides four meals. Four meals. Because you know what? Like I tell people, uh, if the food bank doesn't receive total donations. Not that everything that <clears throat> we distribute is donated. We right. have to purchase food. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because, because there's we such always a need. Have, right, right. We have to make sure that we have certain nutritional foods always on in our warehouse yes and we have a fifty-five thousand square foot warehouse so we have to make sure those foods are there so because we are buying for two locations our main office and our location down here we get more for the dollar yeah so that's where and that works yep and that works Okay, so Jessica, there's the Columbus Day event, so that's coming up. Yes. And they can get, your website is? Our website is www.foodbankofhudsonvalley.org. Okay. And again, I know we'll have a link, but if anybody's listening this morning, you got your phone out, there it is. That's where you need to go. What other events that are coming up? I say this. (laughs) I should have prefaced it by saying, this is a loaded question. (laughs) It's a loaded question. (laughs) Because you do come into the busy time of year in the fall. um, And so there's lots going on. There is. There is. She says that so calmly. Well, (laughs) we took Prozac before we came. (laughs) Ninth year at the food bank. (laughs) Exhaustion is starting to set it. Uh, so we have we do have the walk to fin- so the walk to fin- is Columbus Day weekend um, and it's a great event and then the weekend after that we're actually uh, fortunate enough to be one of the recipients of the Hamiltonian Marathon oh, that's cool. run in Goshen uh, so we will actually be out manning a water stop in Chester uh, so if you are running the marathon feel free to wave <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll have skittles and water and Gatorade and Gatorade <laughs> nice uh, yeah it's a, it's a lovely it's great we actually um, we're out in the middle of farmland so it, they placed us really well we're right before Cowbell Hill there I have no idea why it's Cowbell Hill but it it you can hear them <laughs> they they have people in cow costumes standing up top ringing a bell I no idea how that not is. a clue why but it's it it's great fun it re- fun, makes it really easy to find <laughs> <laughs> I like that so we'll be there um, and we've been this is our th- Third year as the yes. recipients of, of that so event. That's great. So that's been fantastic, and mm-hmm. they're a great group of people to work with. Mm-hmm. I think it's us and the uh, actually the rail trail because they run through mm-hmm. um, part of that as well. Orange County Partnership is nice involved. So that's one of that. That's our second event, and then after that, I have to remember what what order that's they go okay. in. There's then it's the dinner. Ah, uh, yes, the dinner. The dinner. Um, we have our farm to fork. 
Oh, yeah. A, a feast. Yes. At uh, Rocking Horse Ranch. That'll be, it's a dining event being hosted by uh, Steve Turk from Rocking Horse Ranch, uh, Nick Cetera from Cosmos Restaurant Group, and Mike Foglio from the Ship Lantern Inn are nice. also partnering together uh, to bring a farm-to-table dining event uh, that will be done with predominantly local food and pr- you know local produce, local wines. Uh, they're trying to get as many local vent, you know, food and, and drink vendors involved as possible. So we'll have tasting stations and a four-course four course menu. Wow, that's cool. that I am told is absolutely fantastic. Now, where can uh, people get tickets? They can that? actually go on our website. Um, okay. We don't have them. For sale just yet. Yeah, we don't have we them will. yet. But if they uh, call us okay. at 845-534-5344 and ask for Jessica or Tony, mm-hmm. uh, we can take okay. their reservation. We can take a reservation for them. Or, or just go on the website and there will be a link there to the event page. Got it. Okay, cool. So either way. Wow. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. What if someone is listening this morning, belongs to an organization school PTA Mm -hmm. whatever it may be a big family a small family Mm -hmm. and they'd like to put on an event absolutely they can certainly give us a call Um, we're always willing to Mm -hmm. we're always looking for new options and new openings and play you know groups to partner with people who want to do you know whatever they want to do either we've had people do everything from photo ops to concerts uh, concerts to uh, sort of pass a plate events, uh, oh, yeah. just all sorts of things. We just did, um, we just finished actually our uh, Place at the Table promotion, which is a 10% promotion with local restaurants. So they give us 10% of their proceeds on a particular, we, we basically give them a week and they can pick whatever day within that week that they wanted that works best for them. Wow. And they donate 10% <laughs> of the proceeds on their on that day. We promote um, we promote them through social media and there's a, a release that goes out to let people know what's going, you know, who what restaurants are, are open on that day. And we send wow. out mater- print materials and everything else. So we've just finished that uh, event. We just had family mm-hmm. day at Rocking Horse Ranch Sunday. Sunday. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, so. You know what I was going to say? You guys never really seem to stop and breathe. But then again, as you said, every year there are more and more and more people. If you guys stop to breathe and stop to not have an event, then there might yeah. be a family that doesn't get fed. That's yes, really yeah. what it comes down to. There's there's I mean, always a need. Um, we are wow. our two probably the biggest <laughs> bites. I mean, I won't say that we ever really have a slow time. Slow time no. doesn't really exist. Yeah. Uh, but we do see huge spikes in the winter because obviously the holidays uh, and anybody who works a seasonal job, you know, construction workers, uh, people who work outdoors very often, you know, you can't work during the winter right. and not to mention, you know, heating costs go up. And so there's a, you know, that, that tips, that mm-hmm. balance that we were talking about earlier, of yeah. you've only got so many, you know, so many dollars and they've got to go somewhere. And most people, you know, it's a question of not freezing your pipes and not freezing your children. You're going right. to pay that heating bill first, right. and then actually again in the summer um, because those summer feeding, pro- you know, those feeding programs that we, yes. we were discussing children with the backpack yeah, program. Yeah, because children are out of school. Yes, you know that's something that that I've talked about um, on, on several occasions, and and times that I thought about this. While there is a lot around the holidays, because we're reminded how much food mm-hmm. is a part of the tradition in our celebration, no matter what traditions mm-hmm. or celebrations that you and your family right. observe, okay. that um, food plays a really big part of it. And and I think at that point, people are reminded um, that not everybody is lucky as they are. And I think the holidays will help put you in that mindset. I, I always wish that everybody stayed in that mindset come March and June, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because if you if you need help, you need help, you and need it's help not just going to be around the holidays, right. and anymore too. I feel like if there is, I mean, there are people working full time jobs at minimum wage that they still that here that I don't know how you put a roof over your head at that point. So people are working really mm-hmm. hard, and they still need help. And and um, while all those things in the fall are greatly appreciated, I'm thinking man, we got to get an event going on in the spring. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and you know, Jessica and I are the only <laughs> two people in the development department. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. reach out to businesses and people all the time and say, you know what? If you have an event, you know, springtime or whatever, yeah. 
uh, think about the food bank. Mm -hmm. You know, we would love to be part of it, you know, because, like you said, there's people in need all year Mm -hmm. round. All year round, the need is there, and uh, and you know, and we need to make sure we have the produce, the um, food, whatever mm-hmm. they need to all year round. We also ask people, um, you know, to help us because again, it's just Jessica and I, and we always put a plea out there. We need people to help us plan our events. Committee members. Oh. Committee members. Oh. Okay. So we members. can use. Uh, um, people to volunteers. you know volunteer you know because we have a sorting and salvaging program in the warehouse that when product is being donated by these large companies they have to be sorted sure and we need teams of people to come out mm-hmm. and help us sort this because the faster we can sort it the faster we can get it out to That's the people amazing. so we we we're wow. always in need of people you know to do all kinds of work, clerical work, phone work, you know, event work, <laughs> you know, sitting on committees to help plan events. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a great idea. I thought to myself, you know, if you the, the um, teams of people to help sort, you know, if you're a family and you're looking for something to do as a family, mm-hmm. um, as a group of friends to give back to the community, this to me is something that would mm-hmm. really work. Yeah. Get to get in contact with you guys, the phone number 845-534-5344. And then call. And because to me, you've really helped out people. Mm-hmm. You Like you said, the faster it's sorted, the faster right. it gets out, and the more people are going to get fed. Right. And we do try and accommodate as much as possible. We have, I know there's at least one evening during the week that they're, that they're running sorting and salvage, and, one, and usually about one week, uh, weekend day during. Yeah. during the month so they can figure it out and make so it work in their schedule be, and plan yeah. it ahead and then you guys know mm-hmm. wow okay we're at 27 minutes see how fast this goes do you, right do wow. you see why yes. i say i always go over <laughs> I do. you guys are gonna have to come back <laughs> oh Absolutely. Definitely. definitely you have to come back because i feel like especially we you know, know come, come the, surface. the uh, winter mm-hmm. rare we have to keep reminding people you know, they, they are so giving, like you said, um, the winter time. Right. Because we have a Thanksgiving mailing that goes out. And people are reminded during that time, yeah, you know, there's people that I can't have at my table, right. relatives mm-hmm. or whatever. And I wish they were here. But yet I have food. But what about the people who don't even have the food right. to even sit down with their family? Right. And so it, they they... It's a giving time for uh, for us during that time of the year. They mm-hmm. give more, but like you said, it co- they, it comes spring. It kind of like, and that's when you guys there's still out. people that and need help. and we like, have to remind people. No, it's still out there. All right, so you guys are gonna come back. We yes, when we, we get when we turn off the mics here, we're gonna get out our calendars and we're gonna figure it out. And that's just what we're gonna do so that we can do whatever we can to keep getting mm-hmm. the word out. Um, Tony, some closing comments you'd like to leave with folks. Um, what I remind people of is uh, when I started working at the food bank 15 years ago, because it's my first not-for-profit job. I came from the private sector. And I did a lot of presentations out there to people. And it's, you know I would ask the groups of people, you know, how many of you know of somebody who's going hungry or you have been hungry or something? Nobody would raise their hand. You know, but yet if that same question was how many of you know of someone who has cancer or, you know, a, a, a major illness, you'll see the hands come up. Right. Unfortunately, in this country, there's still a stigma yeah. attached to being hungry. They're not going to raise their People hands. People are embarrassed to say they've gone and they need assistance. It could be a transitional time. You know, they can be between jobs. It could be a medical reason. Right. It could be anything. <clears throat> but because of the stigma we place on it, they're embarrassed to yeah. speak about it. They're embarrassed for people to see them. So I try to tell them, you know, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know, right. for, that we're here to help you. Yeah. You know, and we can only help you if you reach out to us. So please reach out. So we please reach out. Please reach out, Jessica. Some final thoughts. That's actually, I, that's very, I think it's very telling that Tony and I are, we're sort of going for two sides of the same coin. Um, because the thing that I want to make sure that people know is, it's really, especially in this area, um, predominantly what we're dealing with are people who work. 
the yeah. people who have families, they're retired, you know, or they're or they're retirees and children. You know, we're not we are fortunate enough, I guess, up here that we don't have a huge homeless population. We don't have a, a huge population of people who are not it's not always who you think it is, I think is really the, the part. Everywhere we go, every presentation, oh, we don't have a hunger problem up here. Oh, yes, yes. we do. Yeah, yes. And then we, we start pulling out the lists of how many agencies we serve in, in particular areas. And people are just flabbergasted that in even the most affluent areas, there's a pantry on your corner. Yes. If there's not a pantry on your corner, there's a pantry on the next block. They are everywhere. And if so, there, yeah, there is really people should not be ashamed that they need help. Um, it's been a right. very rough few years for a great many people, mm -hmm. and there's no shame in doing what you have to do to feed your family. And look, you know what? I've, I this this is certainly not my line, but I I there isn't I don't know anyone who isn't living paycheck to paycheck, yeah. and that paycheck goes away, oh. and we're all in that situation. Or you have an emergency. That you, you have an emergency, yes. or someone gets sick and someone gets ill, and if that mm -hmm. person had the higher mm -hmm. job, then you know you're in trouble. And I I will also say too, and this is probably a whole nother discussion. <laughs> and I'm making this even longer, is that there are a lot of grandparents who are raising children, mm -hmm. who are raising their children's children, and they're on a fixed income. Right, right. There's a there's a lot of them. And well, that is a huge portion of, of who we serve. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and then, do, do you know, you just heard it uh, a couple of days ago on the news. Uh, de Blasio just found out that the homeless rate in Manhattan has gone up because people have been evicted from their apartments because the rents have gone up. Right. Mm -hmm. And they can't afford it. Right. So, so you have these people who are working hard, but are having a hard time making right. ends meet. And that's why the Food Bank of Hudson Valley is here. That's why yes, we are yes. glad you were here. That's why we're here. That's why we're and that's why you're coming back. I definitely, definitely will. But you guys <laughs> are coming back. Tony and Jessica, thanks so very, very much. Thank you very much, Thank Beth. You. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And hopefully there is something that you can take away from the show today. Um, please, as I mentioned, go to whatever station you're listening to, the website, and you, will, you can hear this um, show in its entirety. You can also have an article around it that will have links. But thanks so much. If you'd like to be on the program, here's how you can get a hold of me if you're a member of a nonprofit group organization, 845-471-1500. My extension is 159. It's beth.christy at townsquaremedia.com. I am on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter. I'm there. I'm there. You, you, I'm there. I'm like a bad penny. penny. You can't get rid of me. So just contact me and we'd love to have you on the program. Take care of yourself and those you love. And we'll see you right here next week.